The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, good morning, uh, everybody. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion on this day when we celebrate the baptism of Christ. We're uh, broadcasting the service this morning uh, from here in All Saints Church in Long Ashton. And wherever you may be joining in this morning, uh, you are very welcome. And we do pray, we have prayed, uh, that by God's Spirit we will all know ourselves to be worshipping as one community, one body of Christ this morning. We mark today, as I've said, the baptism of Christ. We remember uh, John the Baptist's ministry. And in these troubled times in which we live, we recall especially John's uh, words, John's call, which echoes through the ages to us also, that we must decrease, that he might increase. In the various troubles that beset our world at the moment, may that message of humility, may uh, our acknowledgement of the centrality of Christ be ever stronger. Our opening hymn this morning is Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Now we come to our prayers of penitence. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Therefore let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Savior of the world. We'll use the prayers on page four. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and, and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. 
we have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join wherever we are this morning in the song of the angels, Gloria in excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your Son. May we recognize him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So we hear our first reading. The New Testament reading is from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptised? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you to God. I invite you, even if you're watching at home, to stand as we hear our gospel reading. The reading is from St Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 4. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. 
I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. New Year's resolutions. Resolutions. How are you getting on? Have you promised yourself to give something up, or to start a new regime, or to be better at something, or to stop doing something? I expect most of us have, or at least... Most of us have thought about it. Too many years ago, I decided that I was fed up, quite literally fed up, being the overweight that I was, and that it really was time to do something about it. And I set myself up and agreed with the other eaters in the household, who were going to be affected, obviously, that it was okay for me to take this route. And we began. And the weeks passed, and nothing happened. No weight loss. Essentially, I cheated. I found ways of persuading myself that this treat didn't matter too much, or that that indulgence was justified. And the inevitable happened. Nothing. No change. Nothing daunted, we tried again but still no real heart for the project. And the result, minimal weight loss, considerable disappointment. And then I realized the importance of what you might call conviction. The importance of a deeper connection. And the weight began to fall off, steadily and consistently. And I rather liked the new me. As to what's happened since, I'll have to come back to that on another occasion. Today's readings, the baptism of Christ, Mark's gospel is characterized by three great themes. There's an exploration and gradual revelation of Christ's identity, of his suffering, and thirdly, what it means to be a disciple of Christ. In one very obvious way, his, his identity is there right from the outset. In verse 1 we read, The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark spells it out. Gives us language, but then doesn't really explain. He doesn't explain the implications of that title until we come to Christ's death on the cross when the final revelation is put into the mouth of a Gentile. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the Son of God. But what have my long ago attempts to lose weight got to do with any of this? Well, remember, I said... And then I realize the importance of what you might call conviction, of a deeper connection. And I needed both a willingness and a change of heart. Jesus coming forward to be baptized has been a source of some embarrassment for theologians down the centuries. 
How is it that Jesus, the one without sin, comes forward to John, who's preaching a baptism signifying repentance? Even John Baptist, acutely aware of the deep identity of Jesus, was perplexed, flustered even. In Matthew's Gospel we read, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so for now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. When Paul, in our first reading, asked the disciples whom he's met in Ephesus, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. And Paul says, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, to believe in Jesus. Paul doesn't decry this baptism of repentance. He simply suggests that there is another baptism available and necessary for a full life in Christ. In this latter baptism, in the baptism of the Spirit, is that all that's needed? Christ's actions suggest not. And it seems to me that baptism is a twofold event, even to this day. Most of us will have an internal picture of a baptism as being primarily about a more or less compliant infant being held over the font by the priest and the priest declaring, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, everyone in church holds their breath, hoping that the child won't cry too much or at all, really. And some of us will remember the occasionally awkward questions and responses of the godparents, which must rank up there with, does anyone have cause or just impediment? Why these two as one of the most pin-drop moments of liturgy. But within the service itself, there's a prayer that often gets overlooked, a prayer of reflection and consecration that lies between the two, between the confession and the head wetting. It begins, Loving Father, we thank you for your servant Moses, who led your people through the waters of the Red Sea to freedom in the promised land. The priest, in saying this, is rehearsing, albeit very briefly, the long liturgy that would have filled the ancient tradition of vigil between Easter Saturday night and Easter morning, which had become the day set aside for baptisms. It is perhaps this deep sense of the history of God's relationship with his people that Jesus is, is acknowledging in coming forward for his baptism by John. Jesus replied, let it be so for now, it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. We cannot, of course, know his mind. But perhaps it's not too presumptuous to suggest something along the lines of, I recognize that I am integral to the long story of God's journey with humanity, and I immerse myself in that, surrendering myself fully and wholeheartedly. This then becomes our affirmation before baptism, our surrender. This is the baptism of John, with promises sometimes taken for us by our godparents in our infancy. But the prayer over the water in the font continues. We thank you for your son Jesus, who has passed through the deep waters of death and opened for all the way of salvation. Now send your spirit, that those who are washed in this water may die with Christ and rise with him 
to find true freedom as your children alive in Christ forever. There are two elements here. A recognition of the gift won for us by the death and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for your son Jesus who's passed through the deep waters of death and opened for all the way of salvation. But also an invocation of the Holy Spirit. Now send your spirit. And it's this latter that we first see made visible at Christ's own baptism. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. I just love the image of the heavens torn apart. In Matthew, just a verse before the centurion's declaration, we read, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. A rending of the heavens at his baptism, a tearing of the curtain at his death, beginning and ending. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. To trivialize, but perhaps to make memorable, going back to my diet, there had to be a, both a willingness and a change of heart. And as Paul shows, as the baptismal rite shows, as Jesus showed, there has to be a voluntary lining up with God's purpose, a surrender, and then an infilling of God's power, God's enabling. We can't do this alone. God recognizes that, which is why she makes herself available to us as spirit so that we are not just humanly determined but divinely empowered. At his baptism, Jesus is seen to be both determined and empowered. And from there, Jesus goes off into the wilderness to face temptation. And that's my dieting story for another day. And although that story is a tale of reversal, because its previous success, good as it was, was about empowering myself, and we humans are ultimately liable to run out of steam and to mess up. Despite that, the principle stands. I needed a change of heart. Baptism is ultimately about letting God change our heart and the Holy Spirit empower us. But completely unlike us, God doesn't run out of steam. God doesn't mess up. God promises to be there for us regardless. It wasn't only Jesus whom God promised to support. God promises to support us too. There's a postscript. If this speaks to you, perhaps now's the time to do something about it. As Martin Luther King said, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. God bless you. Now we affirm our faith in the triune God, God, Father, Son, and Spirit, using words very similar to those we use. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe, we believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. 
We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we sit or kneel or get ourselves into a position of prayer as we pray for home and for the world. And the response to the words, Lord, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and mighty, we give you thanks for all who are baptized and praise you for our own baptisms, praying that we may know that we are eternally immersed in your presence. May your church live publicly, positively, boldly as your body in the world, as children of God, and as inheritors of the kingdom of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for justice among nations and within nations, remembering especially all leaders, that they may act graciously and humbly doing what is best for the health and well-being of those they serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we live in a world that values equality over greed and compassion over competition. We pray for those who are slaves to debt and for world banks dealing with poor nations that we all might work for fairness and sustainability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who are concerned for our well-being, in particular the frontline staff, key workers, carers, and NHS employees, putting themselves at risk that we might stay healthy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for parents, loved ones, friends and neighbours, especially those feeling lonely, isolated and fearful. Loving God, help us to alleviate their troubles and lighten their burdens. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. We remember all who are feeling badly bruised by illness, by accident or by circumstance. For any who are suffering spiritually or mentally, those who have lost confidence in themselves or others, praying that through your holy grace they might receive strength, hope, and freedom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for every one of the baptized who has died in faith. May they rejoice as they are enfolded in the internal love of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may we rejoice with them as joint inheritors of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gather our prayers together as we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. Wherever you are this day, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so let us offer one another a sign of peace and pray for those from whom we are separated for their peace. Our next song, as the table is prepared, is Lord, I Come to You, a song of surrender and commitment, reminding us that God wishes from us uh, not only our time, our money, 
our worship, but our very selves. Lord, I come to you. Open the heavens, Holy Spirit, for us to see Jesus interceding for us. May we be willing to share his baptism, ready to share his cup, and strengthened to serve him forever. Amen. Amen. We follow prayer B from page 9. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours, always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. 
Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Holy Mother of God, St. John the Baptist and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Like those that look for the morning, so our souls wait for the Lord. Be known to us, Lord, in the breaking of the bread. Body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together from page 15. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn this morning as we prepare to go out into the world, To God Be the Glory. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill, and make you partakers of the divine nature, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, those for whom you pray, those from whom you are separated at this time, 
and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.